Hello students, good morning everyone. This is Ram Sarov, Mass Faculty. I welcome you all to the live classes. Children, in the previous classes, we have discussed about the introduction of what a rational number and the decimal expansion and the types of the decimal expansion. Children, can you tell me what are the types of decimal expansions? Any idea? In the previous class, I told you clearly about these uh, types of decimal expansions. Generally, how many types we have the decimal expansions and which decimal expansion we can consider as a rational number and which are not something like uh, uh, decimal expansions are what rational number. Any idea children like previous class? Did you remember anything? Decimal expansions. So, how many types generally we have decimal expansion? Generally, we have exactly uh, two types of decimal expansions. Uh, one is what? A terminating. Okay, one expansion is what? A terminating decimal expansion. Another is what, children? A non-terminating. Okay, so one is what? A terminating decimal expansion. Another one is a non-terminating decimal expansion. So, non-terminating, again we have exactly two types, children. So, what are the two types non-terminating? First one is a non-terminating repeating. And second one is non-terminating what? A non-repeating. Okay. So, these are the what? The types of decimal expansion under a non-terminating decimal expansions. Isn't it? Children, for the terminating, you don't need to worry about anything. All terminating decimal expansions are what? We can say directly a rational number. Isn't it? And children, you don't need to worry about this also. Non-terminating repeating also. You don't need to worry. Why? Because non-terminating repeating also, we can say what? Again, same thing. What we can say, children? Hmm. Rationals only. So, non-terminating uh, repeating decimals also, even terminating decimals also, we can say rationals only. They are called what? Rational numbers because we can write in the form of a P by Q form. If you are able to write in the form in the P by Q, so we can say those are rational. But children, the problem is with here only. Non-terminating, non-repeating decimals are we cannot write in the form of P by Q. Where P and Q are what? Integers and Q is a, a non-zero number. So, these numbers like these decimal numbers, we cannot write in the form of P by Q. In such case, we can say those numbers are what children? Irrational numbers. Okay. So, today we are going to discuss about what children? Irrational numbers. Are you getting my point children? Today's class is about what? Irrational numbers. So, what is the definition of irrational numbers? Okay. What are the examples of irrational number? And do we have any theorems? So, some questions related to what? Irrational number. So, that is we are going to discuss about today's class. Clear children? Okay. Now, children, in this class, what we are learning today? We are learning about introduction of irrational number. Okay. So, what is the introduction of irrational number? Means, what is the definition of irrational number? So, that is we are going to discuss today's class. And some properties. Okay. So, what are the properties of irrational numbers? And some related questions we are discussing to discuss children. Okay. First of all, we will say what is the introduction of irrational number. Now, tell me children, what is the irrational, what is the irrational number? Can you tell me what is the uh, definition of irrational number? So, how we can define the irrational number? Anyone children? Any idea? So, how we are going to define a irrational number? And what are the numbers we can call as irrational number? Children, I told you, rational, irrational, both are what? Opposite. Rational and irrational. Okay. So, the rational, opposite word is what? Irrational. Irrational, opposite word, that is rational. Okay. 
so at least now you can tell me children i told you already so raised on if you know the definition of raised on number so you can say opposite of that so that will be the word irraised on number tell me children see the definition of irraised on number children raised on number means we can write in the number in the form of p by q where p and q belongs to what z z nothing but here integer and one more condition is what children denominator should not be zero like denominator it is what a non zero number so in that case those numbers we can call rational number a rational number mean it is a q so that is a basic definition of a rational number then based upon this definition so how we can define the irrational number tell me children just look at this definition and define the what is the irrational number rational number means what the number should be in the form of p by q if you are able to write any number in the form of p by q such numbers are called what irrational number irrational means you cannot write that's it irrational numbers means for children if you cannot write in the number in the form of p by q so not in the form of p by q so we cannot write the number in the what form of p by q so we can say not in the form of p by q okay if you cannot write the number in the form of p by q so in that case those numbers are called what irrational number are you getting my point children if you can able to write the number in the form of p by q that is called rational if you cannot write the number in the form of p by q that is called what children it is irrational number okay children look at the definition once a number cannot be a number cannot be how it is it children okay a number cannot be hmm a number cannot be written in the form of p by q okay if you cannot write the number in the form of what a p by q form if can't write a number in the form of p by q so that number we can call children that is irrational number that means you cannot write you cannot write the number in the form of p by q it is not possible first of all isn't it if it is possible you can say directly it is a word irrational number but here it is not possible so not possible means what we can say it is a irrational number are you getting my point children possible means that is the word irrational number so not possible means we can say irrational number okay so what is the definition a number cannot be written in the form of p by q where p and q both are what integers and denominator q is what a not equal to 0 in that case we can say that number is what irrational number okay and irrational sir what denoted by what is the letter children we can denoted as q bar okay we can use the symbol is what is a q bar irrational numbers are what denoted by the letter q bar so q is a rational here q bar is what irrational okay so this is a rational and it is irrational clear children this point rational nothing but capital q and irrational nothing but q bar so that is a rational number and it is irrational number okay now my question is how to identify irrational numbers tell me children 
ratio numbers you can easily identify by looking at the number only you can say whether it is a form, the form of p by q or it is not in the form of p by q that's you can say easily but how you are going to identify irrational number in what way children hmm? i want to identify the number they have given some number something is they have given some number is what 3 and they have given some number is something what a root 3 so out of these two number which is a rational and which is a irrational number so how you are going to identify tell me children so one number is 3 one more number is root 3 i want you to identify which is a rational number and which is a irrational number tell me how we can identify which numbers are rational and which numbers are irrational okay very simple children just look at the question if you can write this number in the form of p by q it is a rational and if you can write this form if you cannot write in the number is what in the form of p by q if you're not writing the number is in the form of p by q that is what irrational so only thing is you have to check where either you can write the number in the form of p by q or not in the form of p by q if you are writing the number in the form of p by q it's good enough so no need to worry about it isn't it you can say directly give the conclusion the number is for a rational number in case if you are not able to write the number in the form of a p by q then we can think about it so such type of numbers we can call what irrational numbers are you getting my point children in that case, we can say all the numbers are called irrational number. So, I can say it is an irrational number and we can say it is a rational number. One more point shall learn. So, how I am saying like on the what basing, I can say root 3 is an irrational number. And how would I know that I cannot write this number in the form of P by Q? Tell me children. How would I know that number we can write in the form of P by Q? Are not in the form of p by q okay very simple children see i am showing some examples here to identify the word irrational number children listen here i told you already non-terminating non-terminating and non-repeating Next one, non-terminating, non-repeating, all the numbers we can say irrationals, that is Q bar. Next one, certs. Suppose root A is a cert, where A is what you learn? Non-perfect square number. Okay, A should be what? A non-perfect square number. Like you can take something root 3, you can take root 2. You can take root 11, you can take root 12, you can take root 19, isn't it? Because 3 is a non perfect square number. I mean, 2 also non perfect square number. 11, 12, 19. So, these are also examples for what? Irrational number. Because the root 3 value is not fixed, children. So, it is what something? A 1.732 something you will get. Okay. It is what a non-terminating decimal expansion as well as the digits are what non-repeating. Okay. It is a non-terminating decimal expansion plus the digits are non-repeating. In that case, we can say this number is what? So, this is a what example for? Hmm? Is a irrational number. So, I can say root 3, root 2, root 11, root 12, okay, root 19. You can take root 20. Okay, so these are all examples for irrational numbers. Clear children? Any doubts regarding this? Uh, how to identify the irrational numbers? First one is what children I told you? A non-terminating, non-repeating numbers. You can take all non-terminating plus non-repeating. So those type of decimal expansions, otherwise those type of decimal numbers, we can say irrational numbers. It's the first point. And second point, all certs. Set with what? A non-perfect square number. And children, if you take this number, something root 9. So, root 9 value is what? Plus 3. 
isn't it? And 3 is what? In the form of P by Q. So, start with what? A non-perfect square number. Start with a non-perfect square number also, we can what? Uh, sorry, we can say what, children? It is an irrational number. But start with a perfect square number, we cannot say it is an irrational number. Okay? So, these are the words. Starts with a, a non-perfect square number. Start with a non-perfect square number, we can say what? Irrational number. Clear, children? Fine. Children, let us see a few examples. See, children, I can say pi is a irrational number, isn't it? Children, you might be thinking pi is equal to 22 by 7. So, we can write in the form of p by q, so the number is irrational number, isn't it? Are you thinking, children, like that? Children, listen, pi is equal to, it is not 22 by 7, first of all. So, pi value is what, children? It is something 3.142, some value it is. Actually, we get the digits are continuously. Okay, so it is 3.142 and this is what actually close to 22 by 7. It is not exactly equal to 22 by 7. Okay, so we are taking pi is equal to what? Near value, approximate value is equal to what? At 22 by 7. So it is not exactly equal to 22 by 7. Okay, so that is why we can say pi is our irrational number. So, don't say pi is a rational number, children. So, pi is something 22 by 7. So, we can say it is a rational number. That is wrong. Pi is not equal to 22 by 7. We are taking close value. Otherwise, we can take what, children? Near value. So, that is how we are taking pi is 22 by 7. But, generally, pi is not 22 by 7. For our uh, convenience purpose, our calculation purpose, we are taking pi is what? At 22 by 7. Clear, children, this point? Yeah, very good. Next one I told you again, third. So, root 2 is the one square third, isn't it? You can take square third, you can take cube third, you can take something fourth third, anything. But it should not be a non-perfect, okay, non-perfect cube or non-perfect square. If you are taking the square third, the number should be what? A non-perfect square. If you are taking something cube third, the number should be what? A non-perfect cube. If you are taking a fourth order third, so, the number should be what? A non, uh, what we call, fourth degree. It should not be written in the form of power to the power of 4. So, in that case, we can say that all the numbers are, examples are what? Irrational numbers. Clear, children, everyone, what is the irrational number? Okay. So, it is an example for irrational number. Now, children, there is a property, I will tell you. Suppose, I have irrational number, children. You think A is a what? Irrational number. For this irrational number, you are adding some number. Okay. I have A is a what? Irrational number. You are adding with some number. So, what is the result, children? It is irrational only. Okay. I will give an example. So, root 3 is a irrational. For this, you are adding some number plus 2. So, root 3 plus 2, what it gives? It gives so what? Again, irrational number only. Okay? So, it is one example. Next one. I am taking again A is a what? Irrational number. I am subtracting some number. A minus some number. So, what it is give children? We will take one example. Again, I am taking root 3 and minus 2. Children, root 3 is our irrational number and it is subtracting something too. So, what it gives again? Again, same irrational number. Okay. Children, this number should not be what? Tell me, children, this number should not be equal to? So, this number should not be equal to? Here, root 3 is a what? A rational number, irrational number, and 2 is a what? It is a rational number, isn't it? And next property. Okay. Next one. Again, A is a what? I am taking irrational number and multiplying with what? Some number. So, 
So A is a irrational number. I am multiplying with some number. So what is the answer? Let me check again. I am taking root 3. I am multiplying with what? Some rational number. You can take something 2. So root 3 into 2. What is the answer children? It is 2 root 3. So what is this 2 root 3? Tell me children. So 2 root 3 is a what? It is a irrational number. Okay. Next one. Again, I am taking the irrational number. I am multiplying with, so I am dividing with what? Some number. The number should not be again irrational. It is a rational number. Okay. Now, take one example, children. Root 3 divided by 2. So, root 3 is a irrational number and 2 is a rational number. So, what is our ultimate answer? Again, it is irrational number. Okay. So, these are the some properties of what irrational number. Are you getting my point, children? Okay. So, let me write, children, briefly so that you will understand everything. So, that is what irrational plus some number. So, what is the answer? Irrational. Again, irrational plus again, sorry, here it is minus. So, minus again some number. So, this number is what? Again, irrational. Again, irrational multiplication of some number. So, what is the answer? Irrational. Okay? Again, irrational division of some number. So, what is the number? Again, it is irrational. Clear, children, these four properties. This is one. 2, 3 and 4. So, these are the 4 properties of irrational numbers. Okay? And one more point children. See, these type of numbers, I told you already, non-terminating and non-repeating. All non-terminating and non-recurring decimal numbers also we can say examples of what? Irrationals. Okay? All non-terminating and non-repeating numbers. So, we can also what? Say easily. Those are number which numbers? Non, sorry, which number? Those are called non-terminating and non-repeating. Decimal expansions also, we can take the examples of what? Irrational number. See children, any doubts? These are examples and properties. So, very simple children, you can easily remember by practice number of sums. So, you no need to buy hard children, just try to practice number of questions. So, you will get easily understand. So, what is this irrational plus some number, irrational minus some number, irrational multiplication of some number and irrational division of some number. Okay. So, this we can do like we can remember easily by doing some practice only. You don't need to buy hard children. So, by looking at the question and by looking by doing the practice many different different sums so you can easily remember. Clear children, any doubts up to this all points? It's a very simple children. Now, children, we have one theorem here. Let us see what is actually the exact theorem. See here. Let P a prime number, children. I am taking P is a what? A some prime number. So, what are the prime numbers? Tell me, children, what is the definition of prime number here again? Prime number means what? The number exactly has only two factors. If a number exactly has only two factors, we can say that number is what? A prime number. You can take example. 2 is a prime number. 3 is a prime number. 5 is a prime number. 7 is prime number. 11 is prime number. 13 is a prime number. Isn't it? So, I can say this all are what? Examples of prime numbers only. They are divisible by exactly two number. One is the 1 and one more is what? Itself. So, in that case, this all numbers we can say a prime numbers. We can say examples of prime numbers. Are you getting my point, children? Number has exactly two factors. We can call them into prime numbers. Okay. Now, what is actually our theorem, children? If P is a prime number, if T, if P is a what, children? Divides A square. Then P divides A also. If P divides, children, if you are taking the P is a some prime number, if you think that is P divides A square, 
okay if you think otherwise if you see this p is what dividing a square then you can say p also divide a okay if p divides a square means p divides a also clear children this point if p divides a square then we can say p divides a also so that is the theorem children here p is a word a prime number and a is some positive integer okay if p divides a square means we can say p divides a also children let us take a small example so that you can understand easily okay now so what i am taking children i am taking one prime number 3 so three see that is a three dividing is what something a nine square. Children, can I say three divides nine square? Yes or no? Yes, three divides nine square. Then I can say three divides nine also. If three divides nine square means I can give directly conclusion. What is my next conclusion? I can say three divides nine also. You can take another example. If I say 5 divides 5 square, okay, if I say 5 divides 5 square means, what is my conclusion? 5 divides 5 also, isn't it? If 5 divides 5 square means, what is my conclusion? I can say 5 divides 5 also. You can take another example, uh, something 7. If 7 divides 49, so 49 we can write as something 7 square. If 7 divides 49, otherwise 7 divides 7 square. So, I can say 7 divides 7 also. Okay. So, that is the theorem children. If P divides A square means we can say P divides A also. So, when you are writing P divides A square means, like if the P dividing A square means, we can say directly, otherwise blindly, I can say P divides A also. So, that is the theorem children. If P divides A square means we can say P divides A also. Clear children, any doubts regarding this theorem? If 3 divides 9 square means what I can say children? I can say 3 divides 9 also. Okay. So that is the theorem. Next children, any doubts up to here? And this theorem is very important children. You have the questions based upon this theorem only. Okay. Now, children, let us see a small question, some example question. Children, look at this question. Prove that root 2 is a what? Irrational number. And children, this question is very, very important and it is a compulsory question in your board exam. Okay. So, we have to show that what? A root 2 is a what? Irrational number. Children, this question we cannot solve directly. For this, we have to go a contradiction method. So, what is the meaning of your contradiction method? Contradiction means first we will assume something true. Okay, we'll assume it is something is true, children. So later we'll prove that our assumption is wrong. Like whatever we get the answer, that will get that will contradict the our assumption. So that is what contradiction method. Are you getting my point, children? We can prove this is what a contradiction method. Contradiction means we'll assume something true. Our assumption is something true. I'm thinking it is something true. So, later I will prove that I will get some answer. So, due to that answer, I can say it is a contradiction of our true. So, it is proving that whatever we thought that is a true, it is a wrong. So, that is called about a contradiction method. Okay. So, first what I am doing children, they are asking to what prove that root 2 is a irrational. But I am assuming children. Okay. What I am assuming? Assuming that I am assuming root 2 is a what? A rational number. Okay, I am assuming that what a root 2 is a rational number. Children, if root 2 is a rational number means, can I write in the form of p by q? Yes or no? So, we can write in the form of p by q. Are you getting my point, children? Root 2 is a what? I am thinking, otherwise my assuming that is. My assumption is what? Root 2 is a rational number. If root 2 is a rational number means I can write in the form of p by q because we know already. All the rational numbers we can write in the form of p by q. So, root 2 also I am writing in the form of p by q. Then children what I am doing? I am dividing some common factor of p and q. There may be some common factor between the p and q. Who knows? Yes or no? So, I am thinking that there is a common factor between the p and q. So, after dividing their common factor, 
So I got the numerator is what? Something A. And denominator is what? I got something B. Now what I am writing children here? Root 2 is equal to A by B. So here what is A and B? A comma B. Both are what children? Co-primes. And what is the denominator children? This is not equal to 0. So this is a very very important point children. So we are writing root 2 is equal to what? A comma like A by B. And A comma B both are what? Co-primes. Co-prime means what children? They don't have the common factor except to 1. Isn't it? Such numbers we can call what? A co-primes. So I am writing root 2 is equal to what? A by B where A comma B is a co-primes. Okay? Now children what I am doing? So, root 2 is equal to what? A by B. Now, I am squaring on both sides, children. Okay. I am squaring on both sides. So, if I do squaring on both sides, so this is what? A root 2 whole square is equal to what? A by B whole square. Children, here square and root. So, can I say both get cancelled? So, we can write as it is what? A square by and this is a b square. Clear children? It's a very simple. I am just doing the squaring on both sides. So I got what? 2 is equal to what? a square by b square. And this I am writing as a square is equal to what? 2 into b square. Clear children? See here one more point. Here I got a square is equal to what? 2 into b square. So, a square I am writing as 2 into some number means, can I say 2 is a what? A factor of a square. Isn't it? I am writing a square is what? 2 into some number. Forget about that number. But I am writing 2 into some number means, I can say 2 is a factor is what? A. Here 2 is a what? A factor of a square. So, 2 is a what? Factor of a square. Why? Because I am a square, I am writing as 2 into some number. So, 2 into some number means that 2 is a what? A factor of a square. So, I can say 2 is a what? Factor of a square. Otherwise, you can write 2 divides a square also. Isn't it? Factor means what? It divides a square. So, 2 divides a square also. So, I am writing 2 divides a square. Okay? I am writing 2 divides a square. So, if 2 divides a square means, can I say 2 divides a also? So, I can say 2 divides a also. Already I told you the same theorem. If p divides is a square means, I can say p divides a also. So, I am writing what? 2 divides a. If 2 divides a means, I can write a is equal to 2 into some number. Yes or no? 2 divides a means what we can write children? I can say a is what? 2 into c. Okay. Next one. If a is equal to c means take this a is equal to c children and substitute here. You can take this as the equation 1. Substitute a is equal to c in the equation 1. So what I am writing? This is what a 2c whole square is equal to. And this is what a 2b square. So what is a 2c whole square? This is 4c square is equal to. And it is what a 2b square. So this is 2 1 time and it is 2 2 times. So, b square is equal to, I can write as 2 into c square. Okay. Now, children, listen here. Here also, what I am writing? b square is equal to, I am writing 2 into some number. So, b square is equal to, if I am writing 2 into some number, mean, can I say 2 divides b square? Because 2 is a what? A factor of b square. So, I can say 2 divides b square. So, I can say 2 divides b also. Okay. See children, here I got, what I got children, just look at the definition here. Here I got 2 divides a. And here also I got 2 divides b. That means 2 divides both a and b. So, I can say 2 divides both a and b. Are you getting my point children? Here I got 2 divides a and here also I got 2 divides b. So ultimately 2 divides both the numbers. I can say 2 divides both a and b. If 2 divides both a and b means, can I say 2 is a factor of a and b? So 2 is a what? A factor of 
ए एंड बी एस आर नो टू डिवाइड बोथ ए एंड बी मीन आई कैन से टू इज अबाउट ए फैक्टर ऑफ बोथ ए एंड बी इज ए क्लियर चिल्ड्रन अप टू हियर बट चिल्ड्रन एक्चुअल वॉट वी आर एज्यूमिंग वट इज अवर एजम्शन जनरली अवर एजम्शन इज वॉट बोथ ए एंड बी आर वॉट को प्राइम्स माई एजम्शन इज वॉट बोथ ए एंड बी आर वॉट को प्राइम्स को प्राइम मीन दे शुड नॉट हैव द कॉमन फैक्टर ऑफ नो कॉमन फैक्टर ओके को प्राइम मीन्स द बोथ द नंबर शुड नॉट हैव एनी कॉमन फैक्टर दट इज अ कंडीशन वी आर एजम्शन बट What actually happened, children? We got two is a common factor. Yes or no? My assumption is both the numbers are co-primes. But at last, what I got my result? The two is a what a factor of both A and B, isn't it? So why it happened, children? Because of my wrong assumption, isn't it? So what is my wrong assumption? Root two is a rational. Because two is a factor of A and B is what contradiction of this fact. Okay, contradiction means what here opposing. So which uh, what uh, which opposing children? Which statement is opposing? Both A and B both are what co prime. So it is opposing this statement. What is the statement? Both are co prime. So this uh, what is the value? This result is what opposing this statement. It is what contradicting what A and B co primes. It is a contradiction in what both A and B are co primes. It is opposing. So why actually it happened because of a wrong assumption. What is my wrong assumption? This is root two is the rational that is called my wrong assumption, isn't it? So I have taken that root two is the rational. So because of that it happened. So it showing that your assumption is wrong. So what is my assumption? Root two is the rational. Then what is the correct assumption? Then root two is the irrational. So you have to show the root two is the what? Irrational. You can say directly, root two is a irrational number. Clear, children. My point, everyone. Actually, we are solving this uh, question is what by taking the contradiction method. So contradiction means what? First, I am assuming the given number is a rational number because I don't. I am assuming something. Okay. I am assuming it's what root two is a rational number. But later, I got to know that my assumption is wrong. Because I got value, result is something different. My result is what opposing this statement, where a comma b are what co primes. Why it's opposing means because of my wrong assumption. What is my wrong assumption is what root two is a rational is a my wrong assumption. If root two is a rational is a wrong assumption, then what is the correct answer? What is the correct value? Then what is the correct statement? The correct statement is what root two is a irrational. So that is what a correct statement. Is it clear, children? This point, okay? So by using the contradiction method, we can use the word. The number is what irrational, okay? Children, for this we don't have any like uh, application, children. So we have to go. Otherwise, we have to solve this type of question by contradiction method. Clear, children? Any doubt? Okay. So that is the solution of where prove that root two is a irrational number. So let us see next question. Show that five minus root three is irrational. Okay, we have to show that five minus root three is irrational. Again, children, they will give here root three is irrational. So they will mention here root three is irrational. Then prove that. Otherwise, show that five minus root three also irrational. Children, this also we cannot do directly. Are you getting my point? This also we can't do directly, and this question also we have to apply here contradiction method. Okay, now what is the given actually number five minus root three? So they have given that five minus root three is what we have to show that irrational number. But I am assuming, okay, I am assuming that five minus root three is what a rational number. Okay, my assuming is what? My assumption is what, children? Five minus root three is a rational number. If five minus is three, root three is a rational number means. So shall I write in the form of p by q? Yes, sir. No, we can write in the form of p by q. And think there is a, a common factor of p and q. There is something a common factor in between. 
so by removing the common factor so this p by q again write as again a by b form and what is a comma b children co primes and b is what here not equal to 0 okay so it is the main important point so 5 minus root 3 is equal to what a by b okay now children what i am doing so this a by b i am bringing this side root 3 i am taking that side so root 3 equal to so what is that actually 5 minus a by b okay so this is root 3 children so this i am doing like take the lcm as b and this is what a 5b minus a okay so children i got root 3 is equal to 5b minus a and divided by b clear children up to here any doubts first time you taking the word given number is a rational number so rational number means i can write in the form of p by q okay so i am removing the common factor so this p by q can be written as something a by b form like after removing the common factor now i can say both a and b are what coprimes where b is what not equal to 0 okay and root 3 is equal to i am writing as 5 minus a b like a by b okay because i am sending this root to this side a by b i am writing this side like transposing then i got root 3 is equal to what 5b minus a by divided by 5b okay now children here a and b so some integers yes or no here a and b are what both are integers look at children here this 5b is integer and minus a also integer so integer minus integer can i say this also integer numerator okay so i can say numerator is integer I can say numerator is integer. So numerator is what? 5b minus a. So this is integer. And children, look at the denominator. Here, what is the denominator? b is a denominator. So can I say denominator b also is integer? So denominator b also I can say integer. Yes or no? So numerator also integer and denominator also integer. Children listen here. Numerator is integer, denominator is integer means. So what is the integer by integer? Tell me. Numerator is integer, denominator is integer. I got integer by integer. So what actually gives integer by integer? It gives a what? A raised on number. So 5b minus a. So I am writing 5b minus a and divided by b is a what a rational number because numerator is integer I and mean denominator also integer. So I can say that number is what a rational number. But children already we know root 3 is a what a rational number. So root 3 is a what a rational number. And 5b minus a is what? Rational number. See children, what is our conclusion we got? I got irrational number is equal to what? I got something rational number. Tell me children, is it possible? No, it is not possible. So, it is not at all possible. Okay? So, it is not possible. Okay? So, why we got this like? Like this type of statement means because of again same or wrong assumption. So what is my wrong assumption again? Root 3 like 5 minus root 3 is a rational number. So that is a what our wrong assumption. So because of this wrong assumption, I got this kind of result. So irrational is equal to what rational number. It is not at all possible. It is never possible. Yes or no? So why it's happened means because of my wrong assumption. So what is my wrong assumption? 5 minus root 3 is a what is a rational number. So that is my wrong assumption. Clear children? So that is why I got this type of statement. So then what is my correct assumption then? Correct assumption is what we can say children? We can say 5 minus root 3 is a irrational number. Okay? So that is my final answer or we can say our final result. Clear children? Any doubts regarding this sum? Okay? 
okay fine children so we'll continue the class tomorrow okay in the next session we'll discuss other examples and other questions okay